Hey guys, welcome. Sorry for the tardiness today. Apparently, uh, Arma does not really want to be recorded. So I had my uh, computer crash on me and I had to reboot the whole thing. All right, we'll wait like one or more, one or two more minutes, and then I'll let uh, I'll start telling you guys what happened there in Altus. Just give me a second, please. All right, so Altus 2035, August, I believe it was seven. That was when the invasion started. So, uh, for this disposition, why we have um, a company of infantry at Kavala, one at the AAC airfield, and a company at Ferez. Those are a the AAF dis infantry dispositions, so one company on each in each area, and they had a mechanized company in a, some military base near the airfield. They also had a helicopter battalion on the airfield itself, along with CSAT's own uh, aircraft. CSAT's forces, meanwhile, composed of one times mechanized battalion, one times armored battalion, and one times infantry battalion, as seen here. NATO forces, meanwhile, were going to assault with two mechanized battalions and one mechanized brigade from the northwest. Meanwhile, me specifically, my squad and I, were tasked with uh, going in after an A-10 raid on the airfield over here. Our mission was to basically come in and clean up whatever forces were left and establish a small foothold over here. If we couldn't, well, we would run back out to sea and uh, get picked up by aircraft. So, to start, I was commanding my squad who was uh, in a marshal, and yes, the marshal is in fact painted khaki for some reason. At the, look, at the time it was, it looked like a good idea to paint it like that, because we were going in a mountainous and forested terrain, so... We took some liberties. My squad and I also were outfitted with uh, woodland camouflage because we kind of didn't have anything else on hand. Now, the 
QA tents here, these things, they were the ones doing the raiding itself. Well, we know it as the A164, but you guys know it as the A10. It's been a few years, and, well, the venerable A10 had to be retired. This thing works just as well, except that it had undergone a few upgrades since the A10 ages. And moving on now, we have the hostile AAF forces stationed over here. There was uh, some uh, some planes, some helicopters, a uh, squad or two of infantry, and some mechanized units. Not that many of them, of course. So over here we have a Strider vehicle, a Strider MRAP, with a uh, small fire team of dudes inside. They were kind of just patrolling out near this village at the time. And by the way, there were actually civvies around here, but they weren't in our combat zone, thankfully. So we didn't accidentally nail someone in the head in the crossfire. We also, uh, the High Command also sent us a drone in case we needed some help mopping up some of the armored units inside, but it's most, it was mostly there just for recon. They wanted us only to use it in, in, in an emergency because, uh, well, in their mind, one squad of infantry and a marshal was enough to take out a damaged airfield, which in my opinion might have been not the greatest idea, but at the same time I can't really fault them for thinking that was enough, because the A-10s were quite scary at times, and also they weren't expecting too much opposition over here. It was lightly defended, and just a small airfield in the middle of the northwestern corner of, the, of Altus, mainly to as a helicopter base, not really a base for jets or anything. So the biggest planes they had over here, well, the only ones, really, were the buzzards. They're neat little planes, but, well, they don't really fare well against any modern jet. However, they can still be very deadly if you underestimate them, especially if you don't have any sort of anti-air, because they're still jets, they still have a very heavy armament, and they will ruin your day. And moving on, there was a small command post over here, not anything too special, bunch of uh, AAF guys were here, it was pretty cozy, honestly. I'm actually kind of jealous of what they actually had in here. Welcome to the stream, whoever just joined. Anyways, the uh, there were some maps over here, and they even had a small gaming rig. Which, I don't know where they got the power from, but I'm going to guess they had a generator here at the time, or they had it linked through a cable that ran all the way to the depot, or the generator. I wasn't paying too much attention while I was there, mainly focused more on just getting the objective on and getting the fuck out. Because apparently, the they were actually having facing quite a bit of a resistance down in the south over there, trying to take the airfield. So, I wasn't too sure about sticking around too much. Even so, because I didn't want to run into AAF or CSAT reinforcements. There shouldn't be anything over here, anything major at least, since uh, supposedly this was mostly occupied by guerrillas. But I wasn't going to take any chances, so once I went in, me and my squad went in to clean the, clear the airfield after the A-10s hit it, we went back up to sea. 
Along the way, we actually ran into another squad of AAF guys over here. Somehow they didn't notice us initially, but once we the firefight started, they kind of... Well, we kind of ran across them. We had to clear this village before we moved on. Inside this house, there was actually a bunch of civvies in here. Really looking really scared. Inside this house. I don't know why the uh, AAF guys are, were guarding a house still with civvies in there, but I'm going to guess that it, they just kind of lived here and they didn't want to leave or something. Not sure what happened. Anyways, so there was just one time squad of infantrymen here. With the LA, with the marshal we had, we had a little trouble taking care of them. It was just the AT that pro kind of became a problem, but he wasn't that big of a problem. It was mainly clearing the house that was considered the most dangerous part, but it was, we were just kind of uh, too twitchy about it, I guess. Because there were just civvies here. No AF guys were hiding inside, thankfully. So no one got hurt. Uh, passing by, apparently this also had this building in over here. Also had civvies. But I'm guessing they were just kind of hiding in there and didn't peek their heads out. Because we just bypassed it. Cleared this small town. Not really town, really. It's just this small outpost and we got out. One thing I was surprised about is that these guys didn't actually have a vehicle nearby. They didn't have a strider. They didn't have a transport. They didn't even have a boat to get around. They were just kind of stuck here. And I'm guessing that's why they didn't exactly decide to go and help out the airfield when they were getting bombarded by the A-10s. One little tidbit that I want to talk about is how we actually inserted in here. Kind of a funny story, really. So, since kind of just swimming all the way from the northwest area was a bit kind of a bad idea, they sent a blackfish, swung around, a, swung wide around the west flank, and uh, dropped us off over at the island. They didn't actually drop us on the island proper. They dropped us, I think it was over, let me see. Yeah, it was around here, near this bay area. We got dropped off and we basically had to swim to the coast, unwaterlog ourselves, and then prepare to uh, just traverse the water using the vehicle's amphibious, amphibious abilities. So, maybe a bit complicated, but honestly, Probably not the worst plan I've heard of. By the way, the pilot was really skilled. I'm surprised he managed to land us like over the water and hover while we were unloading the marshal into the water. He kept the thing really steady, by the way. So props to that guy. I don't. I never caught his name. Anyways, once we were around like a third of the way, sorry, two thirds of the way in, in our water route, a tents flew over us. They were basically on top of the water. Like they were right next to sea level. I'm pretty sure they shouldn't have been flying that low, but well, I'm not the pilot, so I won't be uh, saying anything about it. Except that it felt really unsafe. Other than that, A-10s hit it from the northwestern area. They flew over this area, buzzed the uh, gu guys over here. Honestly, these guys probably shat themselves the moment they saw two A-10s just climb over the hill suddenly. Because the moment when we got there, they weren't looking in our direction. They were looking at the A-10 and the airfield. Like, they were all like... Hold on, let me show you real quick. The guys inside were like... 
all disembarked over here. Just just kind of staring at the airfield from this uh, small p p pieces of rock. When we rolled up on him with, with the marshal, they kind of just shot themselves. Well, even more than they did when they were watching the A-10s pass by. So uh, we didn't actually fire any shots here. We just kind of forced them to, to surrender because we basically caught them with their pants down. I'm surprised they didn't notice the uh, they will hear the uh, the marshal rolling up behind him, but I guess some, they might have just been too focused or something. So these guys weren't exactly hard pickings. I'm pretty sure they did alert the base, but at that point, I honestly didn't think that mattered because, well, a ten raid. <laughs> So, my guys, we pushed up from the water, took this area and these guys prisoner. We kind of had some a uh, bit of a problem there because we weren't really supposed to take prisoners. So, the only thing we really could do was just take their weapons with us and just and uh, hope that they don't decide to go run away right away because we were going to have problems getting out because uh, we only had one marshal and we were only had one spare seat. So yeah, we kind of just took the weapons off these guys and left them be. We also took off their vests because might as well, but honestly at that point they were probably just happy to not have been shot. We can't let them keep the strider because there was no way in hell they were going to walk like 20, 30 clicks back into civilization, so we just let them be, and told them to find somewhere and just sit out the war, because technically they were prisoners now, we just didn't have the ability to really keep them. So, over here, there were some power generators over here. Yeah. Uh, Altus relies a lot on wind power because these northwestern parts are pretty high up. And they're also near the sea, so they get a pretty good breeze out of it. So, these wind generators were kind of just there. We thought about hitting them, but it would take way too much ordinance, so we decided against it. We swung around, around the uh, south, following our route that, the, the, that these arrows pointed. So we landed on the coast, drove up the hill, and yes, apparently the marshal does have enough power to go up that steep of a hill. Went up past the uh, hill, ran up to these guys, cuffed them, because they were just completely oblivious to us. And then afterwards, we made our way down the road, slowly, and uh, we basically ran, went full speed down the road, because there was like no one there. Like, absolutely no one there. No vehicles, no small guard outposts. We, we kind of just raced through all the way over to the hill, this hill. And then we took up a position against the airfield. We started getting lit up over here by some sniper fire, I think. But I, I later on, I discovered I was just the guys at the small village town thingy over there. Pl plinking away at us. So, over here, set up a position, shot the guys inside the airfield. Well, what was left of them, the A-10s did pretty thorough work. Like, if I re recall correctly, all of their heavier vehicles were knocked out, and it was just a bunch of Striders left, and those weren't even armed, so they were just not a threat. The planes were gone, the helicopters were gone, 
the tents were also gone because apparently they hate tents. They left the uh, military cargo HQ for us to pick out, pick out. And I'm pretty sure afterwards they hit something over to the south. West, like in that compound over there. But I'm not actually sure what they found. So maybe it was just some, there were actually a few targets, but hopefully they weren't civvies because I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention to this side. It was just explosions in the far back, like a click or two away. After getting lit up by the snipers, we went down the hill in our marshal and then turned around towards the, the airfield. Snapper, we flanked around from this side to get a good view on the airfield, so going through to some bushes, some reeds, etc. The mud, the muds on the wheels weren't exactly fun to clean off afterwards, but honestly, at that point, mud wasn't really the most pressing issue. Our most pressing issue was not getting shot by the sniper. And by that point, once we reached here, the sniper had long stopped shooting at us. So we ended up over here with an over good, good overview over the airfield, and we cleaned up the squads that were still here. Yeah, there was around like one time, one squad that was still alive, and but I'm pretty sure they were disorganized as hell at that point. So we pushed up around the reeds because the reeds were blocking the view of our uh, uh, marshal. So as we moved up, the marshal got on, kept on moving southwest and reached this uh, hillier area over here with a better overlook. So now they could cover us while we advanced on the on this building right here, this garage. In here, we actually discovered a bunch of weapon piles and stuff, but I wasn't really cared about. I wasn't really caring about that. It was just mostly making sure that the AAF guys were in fact not going to immediately take our heads off the moment we enter the building. So we oh, we breached the door, threw a, I think it was a grenade in there, because this is a military building, no way in hell civvies were here. Threw a grenade in there, waited, and then a bunch of fucking explosions went off, and we realized that we may have made a mistake, because we just threw a grenade f into a room full of munitions. Which, uh, if you are not aware, might not be a great idea, because it creates a pretty big explosion. Thankfully, it was contained within, within the building, mostly. But afterwards, the smells... The smells weren't great. Let's just say that. There was a lot of smoke... And, uh, greenback corpses. Charred greenback corpses. I'll uh, just let your imagination think of it. I won't elaborate further. Anyways, after cleaning out this area and uh, realizing that yeah, this was a house full of munitions and fuel, probably. We pushed onto the HQ building. This was relatively easy because at that point, the officer realized he was surrounded and just gave up immediately. The moment we knocked on the door, he just said, I, I surrender in the most broken English ever. Like, he went up over here, stacked up on the door, knocked, knocked once. And then he just said, I surrender. And he also popped his head over at the window. And <laughs> half the squad drew guns right onto his face. And he, he was, like, scared as fucking hell. I, I honestly kind of pitied him over there. 
Afterwards, we slowly pushed into the building, wary of the fact that there was a kind of just a guy standing there at the window. And he did tell us that there was another, he had another person in there that he was also surrendered. Uh, his, there was a medic over here, I think. He was standing at the door, uh, in front of the door afterwards, after the guy went out to surrender. Like, out in the open, with his hands up in the air. We took both of these guys prisoners, swept the rest of the building, found nothing else. And that was kind of it, really. These PCs, we went on to take a quick peek at them with, like, his passwords and stuff, since he just gave it to us. There wasn't actually anything there, by the way. Nothing important. We all, we all, we already had the intel that they had on this, on this PC, so it was kind of worthless. Uh, the gaming console, though, one of my squad members actually nicked one of the controllers, I'm pretty sure. Of course, they didn't ask about it, but we he just nicked the controller and said he, we're finders keepers. I don't, I'm definitely sure that's not how it works, but well. I don't think anyone was going back here anyways. The, pl the damn place was like a smoking wreck at this time. The helicopters were still burning. The same for the planes. The Gorgon was uh, like over here also burning. The A-10s hit him even though he tried to escape. The trucks were actually surprisingly fine. Two of one of them was like t completely totaled by the explosion. The other one was a bit charred, but it was actually fine. And the third one got off with only some busted wheels. The strider over here was empty, and that this thing actually was completely fine. We could have just took it, but uh, well, decided not to. Buzzards were totaled. And there wasn't actually anything else on the rest of the airfield. It was just one time, one squad, one squad. There were a bunch of guys over here, kind of um, guarding this small camouflage net. But by the time we rolled up on them, the uh, the AT guy saw us, saw <coughs> saw the uh, marshals a big 40 mil cannon pointed right at him and just threw down his launcher right away before he even aimed at us. He just threw it down and ho held his hands up. He was done with that shit. He was scared as hell and he was just done with it. Anyways, greenbacks. Surrendered quick shortly afterwards. The airfield was ours, but high command told us to pull off out of the airfield afterwards because even though we secured it, we didn't know if any reinforcements were going to come. The A-10s by this point have already, uh, well, gotten away, so we didn't really have anything covering us. We were also informed that they, there might be some hostile air coming in to whack us. And I wasn't gonna take any chances on that, so I started. So we started our process of getting the hell out. So we swept around the airfield one last time to make sure that no one was gonna shoot us with an AT launcher while we were running go, going away. And then we went on our merry way to the uh, sea. As we did with the Strider beforehand, like over in this small village area we secure we ba we took their weapons not that it mattered considering that there was like a bun whole bunch of corpses over there well we took the launcher mainly because we can't have them have that we took the launcher and then we bugged the hell out of there full speed oh i'm gonna call my driver carlos or car or carl because, well, he never listens, and he's also the driver of what is basically a huge armored car. So, yeah, Carl drove us full speed, like 80, 90 kilometers down this road. I don't even know how he managed to make the acceleration of a marshal that fast, but he managed to crank it all the way to 90 or something down this road and then run us right into another squad in this village. Of course, our gunner was really competent, too, so the moment we ran near this village and he saw the tower, he immediately started lighting them the hell up. And after that, we they, we rolled up past them, 
kept lighting them up. We disembarked near this wall over here because it provided some cover. And then we went on to quickly clear the village as soon as we can. First thing went was the house, which had only civvies in there. Of course, after discovering that there were only civvies, we went back out the back door because it was kind of rude to turn the entire house into a fighting area. Uh, we went on the sides of the house while the marshal no, moved on and flanked. And we had a pretty good angle on these guys, and we took them out swiftly one by one. Didn't take any casualties, surprisingly, here. But we did take some back near the... Uh, and back on the airfield. One of our uh, guys went down, I think it was our AT. He got shot in the chest a few times. His plate saved him, but he was a bit shaken afterwards. So we went over here, cleared this area out, and then we started bugging out. Uh, one problem with bugging out is that we didn't really have anywhere. We didn't have really have a blackfish ready to pick us up right away. So we had to run back to the island and sit there for another 24 hours. And by the way, we didn't bring any camping equipment. It was just us and the LEV and some MREs that we brought along. Mainly the guys that kept that hoarded food, had some extra, so we didn't really go starving that night. But it was not pleasant. It wasn't very pleasant. So we stayed up, pulled some watches until morning, and we camouflaged our uh, marshal as best we could. And by that, we mean we basically just kept it in the water the whole time, because there was no way in hell we were hiding a cocky green marshal on a small, arid island. Like, seriously, look at this island. How are we going to camouflage a green marshal in this thing? Like, the best we could do was basically park our marshal, like, in this cubby and kind of hope that no one saw it. Shut the engine, put some sand around it. Hopefully it, was, it did good enough drop to uh, camouflage it. Thankfully, no planes actually came over to check us out, so... We were scot-free. We went away scot-free after they sent a uh, blackfish to pick up uh, us and our vehicle. The blackfish landed on the island, lowered its ramp, and then we got the vehicle on it, and we got on it, and we got the fuck out. And that's basically what happened during the operation. So we dropped in over here. We uh, swam across. And hit the airfield after the A-10s went, went absolutely went absolutely full monkey on these guys. Actually, the correct term here would be absolutely hog mode on these on this airfield. Completely wrecked every vehicle, made the infantry piss their pants, and uh, basically gave us a pretty easy time, all things considered. We ran across what it was. We only really fought one squad of infantry, and yeah, it was only like one or two squads of infantry that we fought. We didn't fight anyone else, because everything else was kind of destroyed by that point. This strider tried to put up a fight, but we lit up with the 40 Mike Mike on the marshal, and he died. Simple as that. Does anyone have any questions related to the deployment? Because I'm ready to answer anything, really. Even something completely unrelated. Alright, so this whole thing, it was actually be slightly before the invasion, when we started uh, the whole operation. 
We were doing this at about the, like the same time the main invasion hit. I'd say like us, we were more of a distraction, and we did this during like the dead of fucking night, I think. So it wasn't actually nearly this bright outside. It was during the night. Uh, we stealthily got infiltrated, uh, got our got uh, dropped over at the small island of as at Salas by a blackfish. We swam over with the marshal's uh, amphibious capabilities, and right before we got to land, the A-10s started whacking the airfield and going full hog mode on them. And we rolled up to clean up the mess that they that they made. Uh, by the way, this compound, I'm pretty sure this one also had some civilians in here. So, like, during the dead of night, civilians... One of my guys might have called out a guy, like, watching us from a window, but I'm pretty sure at that point... Uh, he was just, like, seeing things. Because it was in a, it was still in the middle of the night, and although our night vision was pretty good, uh, not perfect enough at like pretty longer at longer distances, especially when we were barreling down the road at like 50 kph from like this side. So, someone might have seen some. There were might have been someone here, but honestly, I'm not too sure about that. So, any other questions? Oh, by the way, welcome to the stream, whoever just joined. Hope you're enjoying it. Anyone have any questions? By the way, if you missed most of the stream and want to want me to re-explain things, uh, go ahead and ask. I don't actually mind doing it. Like, if you want to, me to explain some of the weapons we used, or so the vehicle, or our loadouts, go ahead and ask. I don't mind. Right, the Gorgon. So the Gorgon over here had uh, two pods of anti-tank missile launchers and a 30 millimeter auto cannon, if I'm correct. It's a wheeled armor personnel carrier, and it's also amphibious, just like our own Marshall. In a sense, it's actually better in some ways than our Marshall because it has missile launchers that can deal with enemy armor. Of course, they did trade out with uh, some uh, speed and carrying capacity, I think. Unless I'm wrong, and it did carry the same amount of troops. Which would mean that the Gorgon's basically superior to what we had. Except for the caliber of the cannon. Oh yeah, I just can't check the seat count for the Gorgon. You can actually put a whole squad in there. Like eight guys, plus the commander, the driver, and the gunner for the vehicle.
Anyone have any other questions? If no one has any questions, I'll end the stream here. If you want to ask about my deployment some at some other time again, I'll I'll I can answer your questions. Just fine. So I will wrap be wrapping up the stream for now, since there doesn't seem to be any other questions. Hope you guys enjoyed watching me explain how I got deployed to Altus to hit an airfield after a-10 swept it, while well, the main invasion force dealt with the main AAF and CSAT airfield. Unfortunately, they didn't actually successfully take the airfield, they got repelled pretty hardly. Over on the western side, on the southern side, they had a lot more success, they took that area pretty quickly. So it was, um, the front line was basically drawn at the airfield afterwards, so we took the southwestern flank and the uh, the CSAT and AAF held the eastern side. Right, I guess that will be wrapping up this stream. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you some other time. Bye.